Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today, I'm very excited to be here today, to film a very fun video. This is my TBR check-in and book haul for the month of October and I have really been looking forward to filming this video. So it is going to be a huge one, so strap in, here we go. Let's not waste any time, let's talk about the TBR balance. So. If you remember, when we ended the month of September, we were in excellent shape. I had gotten the TBR down to 89 books, so had reached my goal of getting it under 100. And then October came, and it was my birthday month, as we all know. So let's see what happened, shall we? What happened was I read 11 books, physical books, off my shelf. No, I'm sorry. I read 11 total for the whole month. Seven of those were books that I physically owned and off my shelf. I brought in 21 books and I unhauled one book. So that left me with a plus 13 for the month and brought my total back up to 102. <laughs> yes, my friends, we are back up over 100. But I will say I am not sad about this in any way because all of the books that I brought in for October, I'm super excited about. It was my birthday month. It is a big month for me to bring books into my house. And um, so like no regrets there. And also 102 is still a very good number, a very reasonable number that I can work with. So what did I DNF? I DNF'd and I will be unhauling this book, Jane Austen's England, Daily Life in the Georgian and Regency Periods by Roy and Leslie Adkins. Um, and you can see my bookmark's still in it. I haven't taken it out yet. I read the first chapter, um, the introduction in the first chapter, that's the first uh, 20 pages, and it just was not for me. I did not like the writing style. I found it too dry, and um, I wasn't interested enough in the subject to uh, plow through a book that's dry when it's, you know, a nice big chunky nonfiction. So this one will be Heading out of my house, I just took the bookmark out, that one is going away. So, then that leaves all of these books that I have to show you that I purchased or was gifted in the month of October. So, um, let's start with, uh, I'll, this is going to be in no particular order. This is a book that I purchased because I will be buddy reading it and you've seen it recently on my nonfiction November TBR. This is The Secret Life of Lobsters. How Fishermen and Scientists Are Unraveling the Mysteries of Our Favorite Crustacean by Trevor Corson. And I plan on reading this in the month of November. So I had to have this one for a buddy read. Then the next book is also for a buddy read, although not for uh, November. This one is a buddy read that I have planned for December. This is the next book in the Elizabeth George Despec uh, excuse me, Detective Lindley series, uh, In the Presence of the Enemy. And so I have been buddy reading this series with Britta Bowler, and we will be picking up this, uh, I think it's number eight uh, in that series for December. So had to have that one. Another <laughs> potential buddy read for December for uh, Cloak and Dagger Christmas is uh, another series that I've been reading with this one with Doris from Aldi Books. This is uh, Revelation. Uh, the next book that I need to read in the Matthew Shardlake mystery series. This is historical mystery set way back in the time of King Henry VIII uh, by C.J. Sansom. And uh, Doris and I have been like reading one of these a year, usually during the month of December for like the last several years. So this is the next one we have to read in that series. So I picked that up. And then these next few books were gifts. So uh, I'm going to talk about gifts next. These two are from Kim at Middle of the Book March, who very kindly and surprised, it was a surprise to me, I received a package in the mail with these two books in it from her. This is Shiny and New, 10 Moments of Pop Genius That Defined the 80s by Dylan Jones. So I was a child of the 80s. I, my preteen and my teen years were during the 80s. I graduated from high school in 1991. So I am a huge fan of 80s music and I am thrilled to have this collection of essays. Um, and it has, it has, you know, like these are what some of the um, chapters are about. 1980, Hello Hip Hop. 1981, Too Much Fighting on the Dance Floor. Number 82, Men in Hats who I loved. Number uh, 1983, How Does It Feel? 
and so forth and so on. And so I am super excited. I may actually pick this one up in November for nonfiction November. It didn't, I didn't put it on my TBR, but um, I've been eyeing this one quite a lot and I'm really interested in checking this one out because I'm feeling, been, it was a big birthday for me this year. And so I've been feeling rather nostalgic about the eighties uh, recently. So this one probably will get read uh, fairly soon. And then the second one that she sent me is Rewild, The Art of Returning to Nature by Nick Baker. Um, and this one has a really cool gold embossed cover. Uh, it says an ingenious and invigorating insight into the essential wildness within us all. So this is another book that talks about um, nature and nature writing and uh, the wild places in the world and Kim knows that I love those topics. So thank you very much, Kim. Those are both look like they're going to be big hits for me and right up my alley. And then these next three books are gifts from Britta Bowler. She sent me a package. Um, I knew that this package was coming, but I did not know what was in it. So super excited to receive these ones. Um, this is The Artificial Sil Silk Girl by Ermgard Keen. Is it Keen or Kuhn? Not quite sure how to pronounce her last name. Kuhn, maybe? And this is translated by Kathy Von Ankum. Um, and this one's been on my wish list for quite a while. I don't remember who I first heard talk about this, probably Britta, um, but this is a book, it's about, it's set back in the early um, part of the 1900s, right before uh, sort of the 1930s, so 1931 um, is when this book was written. Okay, and it's the story of Doris, uh, who is writing about her own life story. So yeah, this one I've been wanting to read for such a long time. So excited to have that one. And then another book um, by an author I have never read before. This is The End of Days by Jenny Erpenbeck. I've never read any Jenny Erpenbeck. I know she is a very well-known German writer and I have wanted to try some of her stuff. So Britta very kindly sent me this one, which I don't even know what it is about it says um 20th century european history uh and it's told through the life of one woman so yeah that one sounds fabulous as well and then this one which i love the cover i mean this cover look at this beautiful beautiful thing this is a naked hardback which i love it is what an owl knows by jennifer ackerman I love Jennifer Ackerman. I've read several of her books uh, in the past. She writes about birds and um, her nature writing is fabulous. And she writes so interestingly about birds and bird life. And um, I really love owls. So I am really, really excited to own this beautiful, beautiful book. So thank you, Britta, for that one. That one is also really high up on my list of books that I wanna pick up very, very soon. And then last but not least for gifts, this is a gift from um, two friends of mine in real life. They very kindly sent this to me. This is This Other Eden by Paul Harding, which is a book that's been talked about quite a bit on BookTube recently because it was um, long listed for the Booker Prize. I believe the Booker Prize, one of those literary prizes. And this is the story of an island off the coast of Maine where um, after, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, some freed slaves uh, established a community and sort of lived apart in this community from the mainland and had their own uh, society that was very, um, you know, they were very, they kept very much to themselves. And then what happens when some outsiders come to this island and sort of disrupt the community that they formed there? Um, I believe it's a missionary that comes there. Is it a missionary? as a school, yeah, school teacher turned missionary um, shows up in this community and sort of upsets the apple cart, as they say. So um, my friends thought that this book sounded like something that I would like, and I was really thrilled to receive this gift from them. Um, I, it's new fiction, which I don't often get to fiction until it's like quite a few years down the road kind of thing. So it's nice for me to have a new fiction book to dip into. So those were the gifts. So this next huge stack of books are all the books that I bought on our trip to Montreal. 
And you've seen, if you watch that vlog, you've sort of seen an image of the stacks of things that I bought. So let's talk about that. This first book is one that I've already reviewed because I read it the same weekend I bought it. And this is Part of Your World by Al Abby Jimenez. Um, so this came in and went out in the same month. Romance, contemporary romance. I loved it. I will be reading um, another book by her very soon. Uh, I plan to read the sequel to this one, which is called Yours Truly. Probably won't make it through this month without picking that one up and reading it. Kind of just be honest about that. Um, I need to set up something here to put these books on. There we go. These next two books, um, I have finished one of them, but just here in the month of November. So it didn't count for books read for me in October. But that is uh, this book, The Prime Minister uh, by Anthony Trollope. This is book five in the Palliser series. Uh, and I also bought in the same, um, what's the word I want? The same cover type um, from Oxford is the publisher. This is The Duke's Children. This is book number six in the final book in the Palliser series. So I read that started this one in October and just finished it a couple days ago. Um, and I really enjoy Anthony Trollope's writing. And I was I had gone to a used bookstore while I was in Montreal. I was thrilled to see this. Um, actually, the whole series was there in this edition. Edition was the word I was looking for. The series was there in this whole edition. And after I left the bookstore, I thought that was dumb. I should have just bought, even though I had already read books one through four on my ebook, um, on my Kindle as ebooks, I, I should have just picked up the whole series so that I could have them on my shelves. But I didn't. So here we are. I just have the Prime Minister and the Duke's Children and um, very much love Anthony Trollope and I'm tickled to have those physical copies of that series on my shelf. I don't have a lot of his stuff in physical copy because I've read so much of it as either ebook or audiobook. So um, it's nice whenever I can find uh, editions used of his stuff. And then let's see, what else do we have on here? I picked this little slim novel up. This is Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagasawa. And this is translated by Eric Ozawa. Um, I had heard, I had seen this on the Midnight Readers channel during Shorty September. And then just recently, Sarah at Hardcover Hearts read this and reviewed it. Um, and it's just a little tiny thing. And when I saw it, um, this was in the first bookshop that I visited in Montreal. And I saw this one, I was like, I, first of all, I love this cover. I think it's super adorable. Um, and I depleted my collection of shorties during the month of September, as you remember. And um, this one just sounded like a really cute story. It's about a woman who, I think she loses her job and her boyfriend and her uncle owns this bookshop. And so she goes and um, works in this bookshop after a bunch of life's setbacks and what happens to her. So um, very much looking forward to reading that. And then another book that I picked up at the used bookstore, also for another Victober type read, this is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. I have not yet read any Wilkie Collins and there's this one and The Moonstone, I think they get talked about quite a bit by this author. Um, and I've been wanting to try something um, by this author and particularly for as a Victorian sensation novel and um, I thought well I really like this cover and it was used so I was able to pick it up fairly reasonably priced and it'll be a good place for me to start with this author and see if they are up my alley. Let's see what else did I get I think no, a few more things that I got at the used bookstore here before we move on. I got this collection of essays, One Man's Meat um, by E.B. White. E.B. White, of course, well-known author of children's books like Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little. Um, I, my favorite by him is The Trumpet of the Swan. And he moved from New York City to a little farm on the coast of Maine in Blue Hill. And I just love his writing. And I've heard that his essays are fantastic. So when I saw this essay collection, I grabbed it, although the, the bookstore owner, the, like I said, this was at the used bookshop, and I had been talking with the owner and his wife, and they kind of teased me that I came all the way to Montreal to buy a book by a main author and take it away from their clientele in Montreal, and um, I should buy it in Maine kind of thing. And they were just teasing me, of course, but I thought that was really funny that I would go on a trip to buy a main author. But I'm excited to, I've actually read, I think the first couple essays in here. And um, these are written, I think in the forties, like right after World War II, I think is when he's moved. Is it 
no, in early in the early forties, he um, published these columns for the New Yorker, and um, so he was writing from his farm up in Maine and sending these down to New York to be published in the New Yorker, and um, so it's an interesting time period too for him to be writing these these kind of uh, rural lifestyle type um, columns. So yeah. Excited to have that one in my collection. And then the last book that I picked up at the used bookstore was this chunker. This is The Gene, An Intimate History by Sudhartha Mukherjee. Um, so yeah, large science nonfiction. I've read his uh, The Emperor of All Maladies, the biography of cancer that he wrote. And then just recently I read his The Song of the Cell, uh, which was on the BookTube Prize this past year. And he writes really well for science nonfiction. I will say that he is not as, um, I don't love him as much as I love like Ed Young um, or some other science writers like David Quammen. For example, I don't think he has that same sort of narrative style to his writing that they do that sort of pulls you in and doesn't let you go um, kind of thing. But I do think that he, he has just a brilliant understanding of um, biology. And I think that this is a book that I've heard is really good at explaining things about genes, which is an area that I am not particularly strong in, in terms of my science knowledge. So uh, I think this one is something that I will get a lot out of. And then this last stack are new books that I bought at various bookstores in Montreal. So um, these two books were in a bookshop that catered to, uh, specifically had Muslim and uh, Middle Eastern uh, and Black um, and feminist were the themes of the books that were curated in this very small bookstore. So I picked up Clay's Ark, which is the third book in the Patternist series by Octavia E. Butler. And I just read um, the second book in this series, um, which I don't even remember the name of it. Is it Seed of My Seed? Something like, something to that effect. Mind of My Mind. Mind of my, Wild Seed is the first one. Mind of My Mind is book two. Clay's Ark is book three. So I wanted to have the third book in the series because I've been trying to make my way through this series this year. Um, so I'm hopeful to get to this one before the end of 2023. We'll see how I do. It's not a long book and I really, when I pick up um, Butler's work, I usually speed through them really quickly. This is science fiction series. Um, that is about uh, a race or a group of folks who are not quite entirely human. <laughs> um, and so I don't want to say anything else really to spoil it, but uh, I really have been enjoying the series a great deal. And then in that same bookstore, I picked up a book that doesn't count on my TBR because I've already read this book, um, but I read it as an ebook and I wanted to have a physical copy. And this is A Little Devil in America by Hanif Abdurabkib, 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 I think is how you say it. Um, and I love this. I read it last year for the Book Two Prize. And I absolutely thought it was brilliant. I I was just blown away by the writing. And this is a collection of essays about um, black performance. And it is so interesting and so beautifully written and just captivating in all ways. It talks about things like the culture around attending funerals. Um, it talks about playing spades and how important that is to black culture. It talks about um, this first, the, the cover depicts the first essay, which is about this period in American history where uh, dance offs were really popular. And so people would dance for like, it was a competition where people would start dancing and they would continue dancing for like hours and hours and hours to see who could dance the longest. So some of these would go on for like 48 hours or even longer. It was like crazy how long these dance off competitions went. And so that was a fantastic essay as well. So love this collection, really glad to have it finally in my permanent library. Um, I picked up a few Canadian authors while I was there, and I was specifically looking for Canadian authors uh, or books, Canadian literature kind of thing. This is The Break by Catherine, Katharina Vermet. And uh, lots of folks have been talking about this on BookTube, this particular author. I think there are three books now that are connected. This is the first one. Um, and uh, this is set in a community of mixed indigenous and settler descent. The Break tells the story of a multi-general 
multi-generational family dealing with the fallout of a shocking crime. So yeah, indigenous fiction, um, and I've heard nothing but good things about this author, so I'm really tickled to have the first book in the group here and gonna give it a try and see what I think of it. And then a nonfiction about uh, indigenous culture. This is Valley of the Bird Tale, an Indian Reserve, a White Town, and the Road to Reconciliation by Andrew Stobo Snyderman and Douglas Sanderson. Um, I first heard about this book on Sean the Book Maniac's channel. He had the authors on for an interview, and uh, I was just, I just think that this is book, this book is right up my alley. This is just the kind of book that I like to read about. So um, yeah, this is about a Indian reserve that, uh, and it's white neighbors, like the people, the people in the communities that live around this Indian reserve. And um, yeah, love this cover too. So <laughs> very, very thrilled to have that one. And then this one that's been highly, highly praised on BookTube. This is The Sleeping Car Porter by Suzette Mayer. This is a collection of short stories, I believe. No, this is not a collection of short stories. This is the story of a porter, a black porter on a, back in the time when people traveled by train everywhere. And his, like, he's trying to um, work to get enough money to go to dental school, I believe. And it's all about the injustices and the discrimination and everything that he faces as a porter, um, having to uh, cater to white people and their whims and desires. And if he doesn't do everything that they want him to do, um, he runs the risk of getting fired all the time. And he's really trying to keep this job so that he can work to get the money that he needs to go to dental school. And like, I've heard so many people that have read this book and really enjoyed it. So um, I was, you know, it's been on my list as one that I've wanted to try for a really long time. So uh, really glad to have finally found a copy and picked that one up. So those were all the Canadian authors or Canadian indigenous authors that I picked up. And then finally, the last book in this pile, this was a huge pile of books that I brought into my house. This is a book that's been on my wish list for years and years. This is Pale Horse, Pale Rider by Catherine Ann Porter. And this is a story uh, that takes place during the 1918 flu pandemic. And um, I read a nonfiction, I've read a couple of nonfictions about the 1918 flu pandemic. And uh, this book sort of falls right into that theme and that's that uh, time period of history that I'm so fascinated with. And Several people had recommended this book to me when I was reading those nonfiction uh, stories as, you know, a really great additional reading uh, thing to pick up to go along with that. So when I saw this and it was a staff pick, I was sort of going through the shelves in this tiny little bookstore and, and I was like, oh, I've been wanting to read that book forever. And the young woman who was working in the store that day saw me pull it off the shelf and came like hurrying over. She's like, that's my pick. I picked that one. Um, I did. So we had a nice conversation about her uh, passion for this story. And she was so pleased that I had picked it up um, because it was her her choice to highlight this one. So yeah, and this is this is not, a, you know, a recent book. Um, this is first published in nine. Oh, goodness gracious, a long time ago. Um, I'm not for sure. It looks like at least some part of this was first published in 1936. So this is, I believe, a collection of um, interconnecting stories, like maybe three no novellas, I, I think it is. Um, oh, yes, three short novels, it says. So uh, the first one's called Old Mortality. The second one's called Noon Wine. And then the third one's Pale Horse, Pale Rider. So, yeah. We shall see uh, what that's all about. And if all of those stories are about the flu pandemic or if maybe only the very last one is, I have no idea, but we, I will find out and I will report back. So that's it. That's the birthday book haul. And that is my TBR, <laughs> the state of my TBR as we start the month of November. Um, you know, I am, I'm back up over a hundred by two, but honestly, it's no big deal. And it's just a fun game that I play with myself. And uh, yeah, and these books that I've brought into my personal library this past month, I am just tickled to death to have them. 
super exciting. It was a wonderful way to um, celebrate my birthday. I thank you all so much for watching. Uh, hope that you're all finding some great books to read and I will talk to you later.